Okay, so here is another type of um, slideshow, if you want to call it that, gallery, whatever. <coughs> You'll notice that there are, I mean, for the most part, this whole project looks blank, but to the left we have six little images here, and you'll notice that they're all buttons. Instead of blank images, you could put um, a little thumbnail of the image that you're going to see. And what this allows you to do, this type of slideshow, is instead of clicking forward, 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 backward, 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 <coughs> and just simply viewing them in a loop, you can jump around in the timeline. So if I want to see slideshow, slide one, I just click the first one. If I want to see the last one, I click that and it loads into this little compartment over here. Okay? So you can have as many of these as you want. You can have as few, as few of them as you want. And every time you click, all it does is it loads a separate slide. Now notice that the size of the slides are uniform, all the same size. They all load in a container, this empty container. And the other important thing is that if we look at the library, that notice that none of those slides are in, in the library. They reside outside. Now, why is that advantageous? Because it makes it easier. I'm going to answer that. It's <coughs> is because it makes it easier to edit your slideshow. Um, what you would have to do with the slideshow that we did last week is that you have to import the new slide put it in your library, and then you have to swap it with another one or add it. This way you just, you don't have to do that. You can, if you want, you can use the same, as long as the, the file has the same file name as one of the other ones that you've used, it will look for that file name. It won't look for the image itself. So, how does, you know, how does this thing work? Let's go ahead and, and close this. And let's <coughs> look at his project here. And now you'll notice he just has, actually this layer is unimportant. It's just that he's showing that he owns the copyrights to this. I'm not sure how he can own the copyrights to this, but he thinks he can. It, it's just basic action script, so I don't, I don't know what he thinks is unique about this. <coughs> um, let's go ahead and lock his little notation here. But you'll notice here we have this is, <coughs> and this is something that's built in here under components, under um, UL loaders. And if we look at the action script here um, for just a second, that's what the LDR stands for, my loader, LDR, my loader, <coughs> is that this little movie, or you know, it is a movie clip here, actually, yeah, it is a movie clip, um, is where those images are, are put in. I mean, they, and notice that, that it happens to be the same size as the images that were loaded. And we select each of these, and you'll notice that each of these have button attributes. So we have six buttons, we have a little bit of text up here, we have a background, we have a loader. That's all we have on here. And as I said, you can have one of these, or you can have as many as you want, but they do take up real estate. And you want them small, but not too small. Um, and instead of just blank, the way he has them here, or setting it as slide one, two, three, four, or five, you typically want to put in that button a little um, preview or thumbnail of what it is the person's going to see. So if something strikes the end user's fancy and they go, oh, that one looks pretty interesting, they can jump right to it. They don't have to go through all the slides like in a carousel to, to get to this. So here's the loader, here are the buttons. Now what, you know, where, where are the images? They're in the same folder as this project. So if I were to go outside of this for a moment, <coughs> Um, the, you have access to this file, I will give you access to this file and all the other files if you want, so that you can use this as a template and just, again, put in your own interface and use this action script and you can rearrange it and as long as the action script is intact, it will work perfectly, just like the last slideshow that we did. 
Um, let me go in here. Here's Miller, uh, my public folder, Flash boot, boot Camp is what this is. And if you want this entire folder, you can have this. This is really pretty nifty. Um, it was on lynda.com for a while, but it will take you from, in a very short amount of time, it'll take you through all of Flash, and it has some good examples in here like this one. Um, what I want to do is I want to look in the source files, <coughs> and I want to look at action script. This is the last part, part four. Mm -hmm. And we could look at the UI loader, which is what we're using here, but actually this is the gallery folder. And notice inside the gallery folder, we have the flash files, and here's the SWF file. And in the same folder, notice that we have his, all of his slides, road trip one through six, and they're JPEGs. So just like we've done in the past, all of these JPEGs would have hap had to be opened up in Photoshop, saved for web, compressed properly, and they here they reside outside. They're not inside your flash document itself in the library. But what we do have to pay close attention to is the name, how it's named, and the exact spelling, the exact syntax, whatever you want to call it, exactly the way you have it in here. He did use capital letters. I would probably caution against that, but that's OK. He's still, there is no space between words. Um, be on the safe side, I would have used the lowercase r in all of these, but it seems to work just fine. And it has the extension, and he has one, two, three, four, five, six. So <coughs> let's go back <coughs> and let's look at how he scripted this thing. So here's the loader. This is the, the movie clip into which these images are placed. What each of these buttons do is to retrieve each of those images and tell it to place it inside the loader. That's it. That's it. But in a minute, you'll notice that the action script for this gets more complicated. Whoops. Let me go back here. Gotta click there. There we go. The action script gets a little bit more complicated. He has a little bit of action script for every button. If you added or added more slides, you would simply copy and paste and follow the same format. So let's look at the first. Button one, what we're doing, that button one is what he has named the instance of that button. <coughs> we're going to add an event listener. It's a mouse event, click, but this time we're putting in here loader one. Okay? Um, function, loader one is an event. And notice this time with the event, it's not um, void because we're putting something in here this time. What we're doing is that my loader um, dot, we're using the dot syntax source equals, and this is where the name of your file goes, road trip one JPEG. So this, what you have here, what it equals, this loader source, has, this name has to be exactly the same as the file name that you have in your project. And he repeats that for every single slide. So he has the function. He has a mouse event. He's done it in a little bit different order than what we've experienced with the other project. The order isn't that critical. That First, they had the, the, the functions were named, defined, and then the buttons um, or the event listeners were placed afterwards. He's just putting them next to one another. Now, <coughs> let me put another, to show you how this thing works, <coughs> is I'm going to put another image in here um, in that folder. So I'm going to use my rubber ducky image. Actually, I need to look at the file sizes of these. So I'm going to open one of them just for the second here in Photoshop. Come on. There we go. 
and we'll see how we can add one or replace an existing one for that matter. And to replace an existing one, all you have to do is name it the same as one of the others. And then that's, that's all you have to do. Because it looks for the file name, it doesn't look for the image itself. It would be in, normally be inside there. So here we have Road Trip 6, and I look at image size, and we have, um, well, we should look at it in pixels, huh? Points. 500 by 332. 72 pixels per inch, that's what you might think. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all, and I'm gonna copy, put it on the, de put it on the clipboard, and now I can go File, New. <coughs> notice that it had, by doing that, notice that it has the same size as the last one, the one that I just copied. Was everybody aware that you could do that in Photoshop? Yes, no? Okay. If you want to make sure that the new file you create is the same size as this, <coughs> whatever file size is in the clipboard will be, when you create a new file in Photoshop, the size of that file. So by selecting, hitting Command A, to select everything here, you know, the entire image, and hit Command C to copy it, it is now on the clipboard. It takes all of that information and puts it on the clipboard. So now when I create a brand new file, notice that by default, the width and the height and the resolution, everything are consistent with the size that I copied to the clipboard. So that's pretty nice. It's a nice feature. So you don't have to second guess or put in, an a you know, accidentally put in a wrong pixel. So I'll put this, um, should probably name this the same, road trip. Be consistent, you know, to be consistent, seven, okay? And now I can take whatever image that I want to use and open it up. So I'm gonna open this ducky one that I did before, okay? And I'm going to use the move tool to place it inside here. Now, you really shouldn't enlarge it so maybe what I should do is put another background around it. Um, what I could do, just to make things interesting, because I'm curious to see what it will look like, is I'm going to transform this, and I am going to make it larger, and I'm curious to see what quality we get. It's a little blurry, but it's not half bad. Does everybody see how it's blurred a little bit? Okay, so that's one of the reasons you don't want to do that. But it is the right size. And that's, this is a system that I use to be consistent. That if, make sure that you do have the right size and the right resolution for a project. That you create a blank document first and then place the content into it to make sure that it fits that blank page. Does that make sense? You know, if you, if, you're, if you have to create a document that's eight and a half by 11, you start with a blank sheet of paper that's eight and a half by 11, and you put all of those elements into it so that it fits that format, and that's principally what I'm doing here. Now I can save for web, but what I should do is I should probably save this as a Photoshop file first, so that's my original, and then save for web. I'm just gonna save for web for this particular project right now. What I did, you shouldn't do. So why, so that everybody understands that. Let me, um, let me go back here and, and try to undo this. Let me go back to um, my history. Like so. Because notice it's much, it's clearer, much more, it's sharper right now, sharper looking image. And that's the downside to trying to enlarge afterwards. If you discover that, oh, shoot, it's, this is much smaller than what I had planned, then you need to rescan it or get a different image or something like that. But I did something that you really shouldn't do. What you could do in place of this, though, and this would work all right, is if I place this, you know, try to put this pretty much in the middle of it so it doesn't have the same size. But if I go back to my file in Flash, 
And if, the, if I'm happy with this background color, what I can do by clicking on the background here is let's look at the background color here and look at the hexadecimal number. Okay, it's not the devil. I guess that's two devils, huh? <laughs> it's um, six, 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 okay. So now I can go back to Photoshop. Oh, let me cancel this. I didn't want to do that. Oh, 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 there we go. Let's go back to Photoshop. <coughs> Let's make sure that I gotta have my, where is it, is it? Layers, I'll have my background selected. And I'll click here. And now I have web safe colors only selected. And down at the bottom, I can put in that number, 666, 666. So there's the gray that I'm looking for. I click OK, it puts it in the foreground color. Now I can use the fill bucket if I want, or I could, there's a variety of ways that you can fill it, and I'm just filling it so that this background color matches that, so that even though the image is a different size, it will match the background and it will appear seamless with the rest of the document. So this is actually, if you have to use a smaller image or images that are vary in size, would be a better way to go. So now I'll say for web and devices, <coughs> it's going to be a JPEG. I know that <coughs> just intuitively. High quality is fine. Don't need to put progressive. Um, save. Now I have to find that folder and put it in there along with all the rest. Um, so let me go into the my personal folder here, public folder. Here's the Flash Boot Camp that I had, source files, part four action script, and here's that gallery. So here are all of the other ones. I'm going to save it right in there, so it should be right after that, number seven. There. So I've saved it. It's the right size, right format, everything, ready to go. Somebody had a question? No? Okay. So let's go ahead, and if I, I need to add another button here. So I'm just going to copy one of these. So by selecting it, drag, <coughs> and hold down the Option key. <coughs> but this one, notice at the bottom here in our Properties panel, that for the action script, the instance has to be named. That's w why, one of the reasons why um, it's so useful to be able, you know, to have symbols because you only need one and all you have to do is rename the instance and it can be used multiple times. So this one I'll name button seven. Okay. So this one is renamed. And if I wanted to, I could come in here, double click to see it's a button. And on the overstate, in, in place of this, I could have a little thumbnail of my image in there. And if you want to create fancy buttons, you can, but it really is unnecessary. And now, with, let's deselect. Let's make sure that I have the frame selected, and let's go to Action Script. And I'm just going to copy um, what I have before. I need a set of, let's see, make sure that I do this right. There we go. Well, just from here to here, I'm going to take all of button six, including the curly braces. And I'm going to copy that action script. So Command C, hit the return key one or two times, and paste. Now, just simply replace. The instance now of button is button seven. Add event listener, mouse event, click, and I want loader seven. Okay. Loader 7. So I'm redefining a new loader. Source now will be Road Trip 7. Look like right? Does it look right? <laughs> um, I think I've caught everything, but I, who knows? Okay, let's go back. <coughs> let's test it. Click. Ta -da. It added it. It looks seamless with the rest. It worked perfectly with everything else. 
Now, some people like to, when they set this up, instead of having the um, projects over here, to, or the, the thumbnails to the left, that sometimes they'll just string them along the bottom here, and then leave this space for text or description, which leads to the next part of this, to add and to make this even more complicated, is that every time you clicked on here, what if you wanted to have a description added in here? It would automatically go into a text box. Now, all of the text that we've used so far has been static text. But what we can do is use something called dynamic text. And we can create an empty text box. And in the action script, we can, when you click on the button, it will take the text that's in this array and it will dump it inside there. OK? So it, again, it's a little bit more efficient way to work. Does this sort of make sense? I mean, as far as the loaders and all that sort of thing, again, if you understand how to manipulate it, you're, it's, it's similar to what we had done before. You're creating a function. <coughs> In this particular case, the function is a loader. <coughs> and it's a, it's a mouse event. And what it's doing is on click, what you're doing is you're taking and it's looking for a file and it's loading it into that container. And then you have a button, and the button is what is used for the mouse event, okay? And you have to name the instance of the button so that it matches, so that when you click on the button, it activates the function and it loads into there. So <coughs> let's look at the gallery with text, or text arrays here. So you'll notice at the bottom, the only thing that has changed is that we have a text box at the bottom. Does everybody see this little blue outline? But you'll notice it's a little bit different in this particular case. Instead of static text, this is now dynamic text. So it's actually an empty text box. And by adding a bit of action script inside our timeline, what we can do is that it will take, when we click on the button, it will take that text and it will put it in this blank text box. Okay, so we have dynamic text and each one of these, just like we did with a button, this text box has to have an instance name so it knows where to put it because you can have multiple text boxes here. How did I get the text box? Well, you'd have to select dynamic text and then select the text and then you could just click and drag. Click and drag, there we go. Dynamic text and one ID select. See how it turns blue? It's an empty text box. You don't, with dynamic text, you don't put anything, necessarily put anything inside it, at least here inside your pro project. So let's take a look at this. Everything else is identical. I'm going to go ahead and play it. But now watch what happens. When I click here, notice the little bit of text that loads below inside that text box. Here is the Golden Attic, Nugget, Hoover Dam. Okay, watch out. Sharp and prickly or pointy. Okay. Okay, so this is what you do to add. Everything else is the same sort of. But now, because this is considered an array, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the text to this. So once again, let's select the frame, look at the action script. Now, notice the top, we, what we have now is a variable. Variables are containers. The container, in this particular case, holds text. Now he's named the variable my array. Okay, and what an array is in this particular case, you don't use curly braces; you use square brackets. And within that bracket, you'll notice <coughs> he has two things. He has the names of the file. So he's, he's arranged it a little bit differently. 
So in what he's, instead of putting the name of the files within each of these events, he's just placed them all here. The second thing he's done is create a second variable, which is the description. So here's another array. And in this case, <coughs> and it's important to note that each of the names have parentheses, yeah, no, quotes around them. That's extremely important. And that each one is separated by a comma. So now here's the description. This is Las Vegas. Golden Nugget, Hoover Dam, Road Trip. And if you look at the button and the function, all the rest of these are the same except for, instead of putting it in there, it says My Array. And you'll notice within those square brackets, this starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So notice it ends here. That's how it, the order that it reads these. Does that make sense? When you have the array, the first one is 0, the second name is 1, the third is 2, and so on and so forth. The same with the description array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So instead of putting it all down here, he puts that information up here. And now he has my loader source, and here's the first array. And in this one, button 1, it's going to load 0. It's going to load this one up here. Before he had road trip, he had the name of the file road trip one. Also in my text, in that variable, that text box down here, text. The variable is description, and again, which description do you want to put in here? The first one goes with the first one, so he puts zero. And it's best, I think, that you keep that order just so that you don't get confused. So that 0 goes with 0, 1 goes with 1, 2 goes with 2. It doesn't have to, but to avoid confusion later on, I think it, it makes it easier. So watch how I can change some of this. And this is what I was talking about. Let's take, let's just take the first one. I guess I, well, I already showed you. I'm going to change this one to the text in here. <coughs> Name it, you know, my rubber duck. Okay? And now in here for the first one, I'm going to name this one Road Trip 7 because that was my rubber duck. Does that make sense? That was the one that I, that I added to the last one. So now if I hit and return, cross my fingers here, and I click here, it loads that picture and with my rubber duck down here. So I've taken the same data and just manipulated it to suit my project. Sort of makes sense? It sort of makes sense to me, too. Again, know enough to manipulate what you have to make it work for you. So if you do, if you would rather create a slideshow that's this format rather than the one that simply goes forwards and backwards, <coughs> um, I will have this, these files available for you to copy, paste, and then change the or you know the interface the way it appear, its appearance but fundamentally the slideshows are the same you might change the look of the buttons you might change the style of the text the arrangement of all of these but it fundamentally works the same again using the metaphor as a television all the televisions have a screen and that's what the the duck is, it's a screen, where the buttons are and how the buttons look and the color of your television set all change. But that's it. Un, you know, inside, fundamentally, they, you know, they really work pretty much alike. Can you do a delete or add one more button? Sure, okay. Let's do that. 
Um, okay, so let's go ahead and take and just copy one, like so. And this one is going to be button seven. Okay, so I've named, renamed the instance of it. When you copy, did you just drag it? I, I dragged it and I held down the option key. <coughs> you can do that in Illustrator. Um, trying to think of what other programs you can do that in Photoshop. There's similar key commands. It's a little bit more efficient, I think, than hitting Command C to copy and put it on a clipboard, and then Command V to paste it, and it pastes it in the, usually in the middle of the screen. Of course, as always in Illustrator, if you're taking it's paste in front, paste in back. There's a number of variations, but I find it easier just to select what you want to copy, drag it, and as you drag it, hold down the option key, release the mouse first, and then release the option key, and it will make a copy of it. It's a very quick and efficient way. But what you have to remember, see each of these, it's the same button in the library, but to use it and have each one have a different, slightly different function, or, um, that the instance of those has to be renamed. So in this particular case, since we're using a numerical, you know, kind of a sequential order, then this one is going to be button seven. <coughs> so now let's go back to, did I, oh, it's up here. Come on. Don't crash. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit down here. I'm just going to take and copy what I have here. <coughs> so Command C. In this case, Command C works. Hit the return key a couple times, so I've added insert in space down here, Command V to paste it. So now what we're going to have instead of button six is we're going to have the instance button seven. Add event listener, mouse event, click, and again we want loader seven now. Function, we want loader seven. My loader source, my array six. <coughs> my text, text description is going to be six. And now I have to come up to the top. And I have to put a new image in here, or I can copy an existing one. <coughs> I don't know why this isn't automatically there. Let me go to the end here. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and put a comma. And then I'll put quote. Um, I don't know. Huh? Uh, what can I put in here? I'll just put, I don't know. And notice it's still contained within the brackets. So because this is the seventh one, it is, in terms of the array, it's six, because it, with arrays it starts with zero. Okay, now I need to add an image here. So again, within the brackets, um, whoops, put a comma. <coughs> and the other one was, we'll just put what we had, what he had, we'll put road trip one. This is where it can get confusing because I'm putting these out of order. And you're going to say, well, which one went with which? Yeah, well, it's in, the, it's in there. If I were to throw another one in there, yeah. as long as the name of that image matches what I have here, it will look for that. It will look for that. I 
Links.jpg. So let's click here. Here are some tech. No, I didn't write that very well. Let's let me check my file name. So I knew that's probably did that incorrectly. So let's um, text with a T. That would be helpful. I put exactly what I wanted. Road trip one JPG. There we go. Not JGG. Told you I was a horrible typist. Okay. Let's go back and test it again. And there we go. So it's it's just looking for the file name. And again, why that isn't efficient for ed for editing and updating your files is that as long as you know the file size <coughs> and if you don't mind using the same name, then you rename, you know, you name that file and just substitute. And then when the end user opens this, and even if this is uh, up on the web, it's still an external file. And as long as, or, or as those files are relative to that in the same location, it looks for those file names. So it makes for editing these flash documents much more efficient. Instead of having to go back, op you don't have to open the flash file if you so choose. Otherwise, the way we did it last time, you have to open the flash file, you have to import the new images into your library, and then either add them to your, your document or substitute for something else that you already have. Does that make sense? You guys feel comfortable? Um, the server should be working. You should be able to um, log on to my computer and take these files. If you can't, then you can bring your flash drive up here and I will make a copy of them for you so you have them for reference. <coughs> well, normally the way you do this is you have to click on the desktop and you select go and you say connect to server. Now, what I want to do is I want to first browse and see if we're here. Um, you know what? I don't know which what number mine is. Hold on. Oh, C A maybe on C A I. Is that it? No, it failed. What what number am I? Well, I can't link to myself, so that might be part of the problem, that I don't see myself here. And if you see me, yeah. Kay Miller, then you'll want to double click on that and then put in your username and password, mm -hmm. and you should see my public folder. And now, if everybody does that at once, it will only allow so many people to log on at any given time. <coughs> when you see the public folder, should see Miller, public, and then you'll see all of these files inside here. What you want to see, where to go, go to is where it says Flash Boot Camp. And if you want to copy that whole folder, you can. And there's a lot of tutorials in there. There's a lot of files. If you just want the slideshow file, then look under Source Files, Folder 4, Action Script, and then it will be the Gallery folder. Okay. You'll have everything that I have. Are we set? The remainder of today is a work day. And this Thursday, because this is quote midterm, probably won't lecture. Just make it a work day so that we can try to wrap up the slideshow. <coughs> Even if it's not done by the end of the week, what I want to do this next Tuesday, a week from today, is that I want to start with Dreamweaver. If there are questions, um, Cindy, you had questions about um, importing music.
So maybe on Thursday, this Thursday, if there's something specific that you want to know that we really aren't, don't have time to cover, that I can kind of go over it, you know, briefly, then we'll do that. But next Tuesday, um, I'm not going to open Dreamweaver. What I want to do is I want to set up an account for everybody with Tripod if you do not have an account already that you can use for your website. Tripod is a free service. Now, what goes along with a free service to have your website are ads, banner ads, and that makes it look horrible. But it is free, and it does give you the experience of creating files locally using FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, uploading your files to their server, and publishing your project so that it's visible on the web. And if later time, if you want to take your local files and put them someplace else, if you have an account with Earthlink or, I don't know, whoever your service is, oftentimes they give you free space, or you give you, they give you space along with that account where you can put your website. The, the trick is, or the key is, that you have to make sure that do they allow file transfer protocol? If they do, what is it that they use? Because um, it'll be slightly different for each one. <clears throat> but we'll get to that. I want to make sure that everybody has an account established next Tuesday and make sure that everybody has an email address. But if it's with Yahoo or something like that, then that will not be sufficient. Okay. okay. So we sit. Huh? Oh, part four. Part four. Part four, which is action script, and then go into the gallery, and that's what I used today. Okay. Huh? I didn't get to anything oh, this okay. last weekend. Yeah, if you're wondering about a project that you turned in last week, I didn't get to grading this week, this last weekend. So I'm going to try to do that today, during the week, rather than wait till the weekend. 